Hello, this video is another update on this bunch of visual programming tools that I'm making uh, based on geometric algebra. Uh, so this one is about quantum computing. If you are unfamiliar with quantum computing, this is not the best video to start with. Um, if you, but if you have a stake in visual programming, uh, you maybe don't need to know that much quantum computing as background, but sort of take it from me that uh, most of what I'm gonna, about to talk about is usually represented using algebra, um, as in letter symbols, this kind of thing. Um, and that's a shame. Uh, geometric algebra was rediscovered back in the 60s um, uh, in significant part with the intention of making it so that you could have more visual intuition for quantum mechanics. Um, I'm going to get to this thing up top here uh, in a moment, um, but just look at the bottom for now. Uh, so this is a visualization of a quantum circuit. Uh, we have our two qubits as input, and uh, it's uh, the, there's nothing happening in the circuit, so whatever is the input is currently just uh, the same thing as the output. Um, this is all very buggy, by the way. Um, it's uh, you know This is the first time I'm showing it sort of publicly. Um, so uh, let's make it so that the, uh, the circuit has something going on in it. This is a Hadamard gate. It's a visualization of a Hadamard gate. Um, uh, it, uh, oh, I can rotate the whole thing uh, as I please. Uh, it's not particularly clear, um, you know, I need to have more shadows or something like this to make it clearer uh, how I'm rotating things, but, you know, um, yeah, it's... I, right now I'm rotating around the y-axis, which is why these things aren't changing at all. Um, so this Hadamard gate uh, is sort of a line reflection, uh, which is to say that uh, whatever, if here's the line, whatever's over here goes to, gets reflected through the line over to here. Um, if I move the, I can, uh, right now it's not a Hadamard gate, so I'm making it into something other than Hadamard gate. If I stick it back here, now it's back to being Hadamard gate, but when I do this, it's sort of turning it into an arbitrary linear combination of Pauli matrices. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, it seems to me that this is useful in uh, pedagogy. So what, what you get told is that um, Pauli's are rotations, which is true. Um, what you don't necessarily get told is that they're always 180 degree rotations. Uh, we can also have a rotation gate um, that does an arbitrary rotation. So this is an, a rotation gate. Um, if I, yeah, I can change the axis that this is rotating the thing by. I can also change, oh, let's, ch so this, this changes the angle that it's rotating. You can see that, um, you know, it's, the arrow is sort of spinning like a top. Um, yeah, this is an arbitrary uh, sort of, which would it be? It's a rotation matrix that's a Z, a, a rotation about the Z axis, because unlike computer graphics in the convention is that Z is up in, um, yeah, and if I, in quantum computing, the convention is that Z is up. Uh, if I If I have the axis pointing directly up, you know, uh, no matter what I make the angle, um, it does nothing because, you know, this is just a, uh, because the, the thing, the, the input is pointing up. So, of course, and yeah, rotating an arrow around here does nothing to what direction the arrow is pointing in. Um, and yeah, these, uh, oh, by the way, um, you know, the, so right, right now, this is a, this is a linear, com this is a, Equal superposition of up and down. That's what it sort of looks like on the blotch sphere. This is the blotch sphere visualization, by the way. But I don't think that this uh, visualization of uh, gates has been explored much. Um, but the purpose of this project, like, it's a bit trivial to, it's completely trivial to only do one qubit gates. Um, you know, we can have one down here as well, by the way, uh, doing the same sort of thing. Um, what's important in quantum computing is entanglement. Um, and geometric algebra provides ways of visual, uh, again, geometric, geometric intuition for uh, things that people don't usually think of as geometric. Like you do see uh, quantum computing people talking about uh, or gates are always some kind of rotation, um, but it's a weird rotation in too many dimensions to visualize. And that is, it's, yeah, you... you, you it's a non-trivial visualization, but so here we go. Um, it's worth, uh, I'm going to introduce this thing for a bit. So um, this, okay, what's this? This is a shape. Uh, I can, 
do this. I can do this. So I'm sort of like pulling along this axis, pushing along this axis, rotating this way around this axis, rotating that way around this axis. I can also do this. So rotate around this axis um, and rotate the other way and pull along that way, pull along that way. Um, and uh, finally, I can pull along. I can pull a lot. I can, uh, yes, pull along this axis in both directions and rotate around it in both directions. Um, this is a visualization of CL1. Oh, beg your pardon. It's a, if you're familiar with geometric algebra, this is a visualization of the even subalgebra of CL31, um, which is also known as space time algebra. Uh, these are, so in some sense, um, it, the familiar way of talking about this is that these are Lorentz boosts um, and these are obviously rotations. Um, yes. Uh, and it seems to me, although I'm not, I'm afraid I'm not completely clear on the specifics, and that's the sort of the problem that with this project that I'm getting to. Um, uh, it, this is a this is this this does give intuition for a uh, for two uh, entangled qubits. So two entangled. I'll just say it. Um, two entangled qubits can be represented, as everybody agrees, with uh, four complex numbers. Um, four complex amplitudes um, uh, normalized uh, such yeah such that they yeah <laughs> normalized in a certain way and also a global phase difference makes no change um, which happens to be uh, so four complex numbers it if you put them into a matrix, a two by two matrix, um, it turns out that the condition of them being the the two qubits that these four complex numbers represent. Uh, is if you took put them into a matrix, if that matrix has determinant zero, then the qubits are not entangled. If it has determinant non-zero, then they are entangled. Um, and it so happens that uh, there's a one-to-one -one mapping between uh, such matrices and this particular um, this particular setup. So. Um, the even subalgebra of CL31, um, and so what, what? What of what that use is that for quantum computing people? Well, uh, let me show the sloppy version of you know the tool that I that I want to make. Um, so what we have in order to the, these qubits are currently unentangled; they have no nothing to do with each other. You can change this one; and it has no impact on that one. Um, yeah, they might as well be in be completely unrelated. So let us um, you know, start again a little bit and let's add uh, a new gate. So this is a gate covering both of them and it performs an entanglement of them. Uh, this gate can, it, in theory, this can explore the full state space of um, two qubit gates. Uh, there's a paper by Gavin Crooks showing that something like this should be possible. Um, uh, but yeah, so right now it's just the identity, nothing is happening. Um, if I put it over here, so this is now a C, a controlled not gate. Um, and a controlled not gate, um, it, if it's in, if the top input is down, then it'll flip the bottom input. Um, so as you can see right now, it's being flipped. If this is down, if it's not, if this is not down, then it's not flipped at all. It's just the same as what went in. Um, so quantum mechanics allow, uh, the quantum computing allows you to have arbitrary sort of interpolations between these two gates. Um, uh, and so if I, let, yeah, all right. If I do this, you can see that, well, yeah, this is happening. It interpolates between doing nothing and being the controlled not gate. But also, uh, if I bring it up here, well, no, let, let's talk about this one for a second. So this is the swap gate. So whatever, if this is up, then down, then the output will be down, then up. Um, and if they're both up, then the output will be both up. Um, if it's up, then down, then it'll be down, then up. Okay. 
Um, but uh, again, uh, quantum mechanics allows you to interpolate between these two. Um, this is this is a particular gate that's well known to quantum computing people called the square root of swap gate, which is to say that if I have two of these gates in a row, um, oh by the way, like uh, whatever, okay, um, whatever. If you've got two gates in a row, whatever comes out of here will be fed into there. Obviously, um, yeah. If you're not familiar with quantum circuits, like I say, you don't want to watch this video to begin with. Um, so let's have two of these square root of swap gates, um, and they create a swap gate. Uh, doing two in a row of the same thing is, in some sense, squaring it. Um, and so, yeah, you do see that this is a swap. If I make one of these the identity, then we're back to being a single uh, square root of swap gate. Um, if I put this one up here, then it's a swap gate because it's identity times swap equals swap. Uh, yeah, but square root of swap gate, as you can see, as I move this thing around, uh, you're kind of getting an interpolation and you're getting, so you're getting the thing that's up here. This is, um, it's visualizing them when they're entangled as this, uh, well, as a, as a, a C, member of CL31. Um, the specifics of this, I know that uh, something like this ought to work, um, but yeah, I and um, the, you know, there's other good papers on there on, about about other ways to visualize quantum entanglement. Um, uh, my hope is to translate most of the workings of this circuit uh, visualizer into geometric algebra. Right now, it's all in. It's all in linear algebra, except at the last moment when I want to convert it into geometric algebra. Um, and so that's a bit sloppy, but yeah. Um, at the same time, um, I've been un... It's been, it's been a really long time that I've been trying to work out the precise nature of how entanglement corresponds to a member of the even subalgebra Two entangled qubits correspond to a member of the even subalgebra of CL31. Again, I know that it should work because a uh, member of the even subalgebra of CL31 is, by definition, a two by two matrix with non zero determinant, or is isomorphic to that, um, and so entangled particles are the same. Um, and the so the the nice thing that tempts me to you know want to keep at this is the fact that. Um, Sometimes you can see like uh, uh, that, all right, as I move this up and down, I want you to look at this top one. Um, so it's kind, of, if it's kind of going down into the bottom. It's going down into the bottom and it goes uh, to, be, to being back a blotch sphere again. And uh, it, you'll notice that it goes to the opposite pole um, from the one that the arrow is pointing at. It goes down to the south pole. Uh, so right now it's, it's, so, it's so shrunken down to the bottom pole that um, it's nothing. Um, and then it yeah, goes to being the top blotch, uh, the blotch vector pointing up. Sometimes it's the opposite way. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's, because, that's to do with uh, problem bugs in my like conversion code. Um, or maybe it isn't, um, but uh, yeah, there appears to be, uh, for reasons that I can see in the linear algebra, there appears to be a correspondence when a, when a, um, when a state is unentangled, um, it's kind of close to be it's it's kind of equivalent to being something like that. Um, this only allow so this would. If I'm right about that, then this isn't a full visualization of two qubits. It's a visualization of them if they are entangled, and if they are not entangled, then that corresponds to this. It, it, then it corresponds. It only gives you insight into one qubit. Um, but yes, uh, if anybody has any suggestions here, then or wants to help me out with it, then it's good. I've tried all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, I've been on this for a couple of months since doing my head in. So uh, I think it's time to look to other geometric algebra based pro programming tools for a while and then maybe come back to this later. Uh, yeah, and you'll see in the next video um, what I've kind of been thinking about.
thank you. Uh, hope hope that you've enjoyed this. <laughs>